Welcome into the Frogs Today post-game show. I'm your host, Jules Conti, here at the Moncrief Club, sponsored by Richards Rainwater. The Frogs are now 2-0 after defeating the Long Island University Sharks with a whopping score of 45-0. This is the first time TCU has had a shutout game since 2017. And boy, do we have a lot of exciting things coming up for you guys. We spoke to head coach Sunny Dykes, along with a whole bunch of our players, Cam Cook, Namdi Obiazor, Richard Tony, and Jojo Earl. The Frogs are going into their first conference game next week versus UCF. So we have a whole bunch of exciting news coming up for you guys. Up next, we'll talk to head coach Sunny Dykes. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you after a few words from one of our sponsors. What do you see when you look up at the clouds? At Richard's Rainwater, we see the greatest source of pure, delicious water looking right back down at us. We've invented a simple, powerful technology to collect and bottle rainwater. Our process begins with the rain. When clouds become saturated, droplets fall from the sky. Rainfall is a naturally cleansing event. During the first few minutes, the raindrops clean the atmosphere and wash away any dirt or debris from surface areas. At this cleanest point in the rain cycle, we collect the pure raindrops into large storage vessels. Then, we use a simple, yet effective combination of ozone and microfiltration to ensure our rainwater surpasses the highest, drinking water standards. We pour the pure, refreshing rainwater into glass bottles and aluminum cans, packaging as infinitely renewable as the water itself. Richard's Rainwater is building a network of collection systems across the country to ensure our rainwater is local everywhere. The purest, best-tasting water comes from the sky. Richard's Rainwater, Sip the Sky. We are back here for the post-game show for Frogs today. I am joined by head coach Sonny Dykes. I just wanted to ask you, what are you happiest about for this game? Well, good to get a win. You know, that's always the objective is to win. I thought we played, um, you know, pretty well. I thought we improved on the areas that we needed to improve on. Played penalty free in the first half, and that was important. Had a lot of penalties last week, so we need to get that cleaned up. And you know, I thought we really played well defensively. It was really hard to get a shutout in college football. thought those guys really dominated the game, uh, you know, and it was fun to watch the defense play. Offensively, just got to keep coming on. You know, I think we had some spouts where we were really good and had some had some uh, some, some times where, you know, some things we got to do better. Uh, but overall, it's good. It's good to get a, a win. You know, college football is crazy. I mean, you know, you look around, you look at, uh, you know, Northern Illinois beating Notre Dame and, and some of the crazy upsets that happened uh, in the game. And, and it was good to see us come out and take care of business. Speaking about your defense, this is actually the first shutout since 2017 that the defense has had. And we were kind of just talking about how we've seen teams score a lot of points, but nothing like this where it's a complete shutout on the other end. So how does it feel to kind of be leading the charge of a team that's setting records like this? Yeah, it's good. I mean, like I said, I thought we made a, uh, a big jump defensively. I thought our guys played hard. I thought we played well. We didn't give up any big plays. They hit one little drive where they, you know, crossed midfield and made a couple of first downs, and then we got off the field with a tip ball and Nandi's interception. So it was good to see that. Um, you know, we played a lot of young players, and I think it was good to see them get experience and, and play well. Um, it's going to be a lot more challenging moving forward. You know, we play a really good Central Florida team coming up this week and a team that's just, you know, that knows how to score points. So uh, we're going to have to just continue to get better and better. I know a lot of conversation recently has been about leadership, but speaking of leadership more specifically, Josh Hoover had 14 straight um, receptions that were completed. How does it feel to like see him get out there coming off of an injury in the spring that he spent the entire time recovering just to kind of get out there and lead this team now for a second time to a victory? Yeah, yeah, I thought Josh looked uh, looked confident, looked uh, got settled in. Like you said, he compl completed 14 in a row, which is um, – it's good to see. You know, I think at one time he was 17 and 19. So was really throwing the ball well, was accurate. Our guys were catching it. It's good to see that. Um, you know, that all starts really up front with the, with the offensive line protecting uh, and thought our pass protection was really, really good up front. we got to be able to run the ball a little bit better at times and finish runs and, and finish blocks and create a little bit uh, better holes, you know, to run the football. But thought the offensive line, for the most part, played well. And then when you when they play well, it's easy for your quarterback. And yeah. And uh, receivers made plays. Thought Savion did a really nice job after the catch. Eric McAllister, you know, Joe Earl, a lot of guys, you know, stepped up. Blake Nall made some nice plays too. So 
it was good to see a lot of different guys catch balls. I think we had 12 receivers, um, you know, that caught a ball. So uh, I was encouraged by that. So up next, we were talking to Cam Cook a little bit, but I kind of wanted to speak to, with you about him first because he had another amazing game, three touchdowns. He had one last week against Stanford. How is he looking on the other end? You know, good. I think same thing. He's a young guy that uh, every time he carries the ball, he learns a little bit more, gets a little better, I think gets a little bit more uh, confident. Um, so was was pretty pleased with the way he ran the football tonight. Kept thinking at one point maybe he would break a long one, and, and we got close a couple times. We never really did that tonight. I was a little uh, disappointed by that. You know, Jeremy Payne got in in the fourth quarter. I thought he did some good things. Looked like he might break a long one, scored on a long touchdown, but got called back uh, because of a penalty. But, you know, like that, like that running back room. You know, there's a lot of different guys. You know, uh, Dominic Johnson did some good things. He's a bigger back. You know, Trey, Trey Sanders got a couple of carries. It was good to see a bunch of different players play tonight. Yeah. Going into next week, your first conference game versus UCF. How are you feeling? How are you guys preparing behind the scenes for such a big game? Like yeah, this? yeah. Well, it's it's going to be a good football team. I mean, they're they're going to be a lot different than the team we played tonight. A lot of speed, uh, explosive offense. Um, got a quarterback that uh, had come, come came over from Arkansas, transferred over. That's uh, KJ Jefferson. It's going to be a good player. Uh, that's going to really know how to to run their offense. They got a, kind of a unique scheme. You know, Gus Malzahn's got a kind of unique way of, of doing things and does a really good job. But UCF's a good football team uh, with a ton of speed, kind of big play potential. And and I think they're going to be one of the more talented teams we play this season. So we're going to have to, you know, have a great week of preparation and go out and play a good game Saturday. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Coach. Congratulations on the big win. I'm really excited to see what you guys do next week versus UCF. Up next, we're going to talk a little bit about Cam Cook, and then we'll be back for more talk about TCU. Energy does everything for us. It's all-encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters, our future. We don't just talk about what's needed. We focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. Moncrief Club for the post game show. I am joined now by Cam Cook, who had an incredible game, three touchdowns, one last game against Stanford as well. How are you feeling to be back in the Carter here for the first home game of the season? Was the energy just different being home? Oh, yeah, no, it was something crazy for uh, just being able to start here for the first time. And the fans had that energy, so it was crazy. I'm just glad to be back. How important is it for you guys to win these last two games, go into your first conference game next week? First UFC 2-0. Well, it definitely gives the guys a lot of energy and drive. So just being able to roll over these first two games and, and show what we can do. And I know we have some stuff we can improve on, but still getting that W, I think we're ready. And the team's going to eat next week. Speaking of that, what are some things that you think the team could kind of continue to work on moving forward with the season since it's still so early on? I think we gonna we can do a better job of uh, playing fast faster. Like we we play we play fast, and that's something we take pride in. And just being able to move the ball real quick down the field, and just not give the defense a chance to react or figure out what we got going, then I think we'll we'll, we'll be a, a great team. Yeah, how has the leadership been this season, and the energy just behind the scenes and in the locker room? You have so many new guys on the team. You have new coaching staff. How's like? The family aspect that we always talk about as a horned frog kind of been laying out as the season has started. Uh, well, that leadership role was definitely something that we wanted to look into and make sure we had those guys that we were looking for. But it wasn't just like leading by talking or speaking, but we had guys that would go in and work every day and lead by example. And that just something that helps like the, the whole team looks at that and sees that. So if our leaders are never taking no reps off or never slacking whenever they don't have to do that extra mile, uh, I feel like that that gives the rest of the team a lot of like a lot of heart and, and a lot of it builds a lot of character for us. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Once again, incredible game. Congratulations on the win. We will see you next week versus UCF. Yes. Welcome to the Squire Shop. We are locally owned and operated since 1994. 
We specialize in the finest men's clothing that the market has to offer at affordable prices with unbelievable service. We do uh, custom clothing all the way to more casual, Peter Moore, Johnny O, kind of everything. Well, my dad's the owner, so I've been around retail my whole life. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's the best boss I'll ever have. I know that. We love our TCU community. They have been so good to us. Come see us today. Go Frogs! Welcome back to the post game show for Frogs today. We just spoke to Cam Cook. Now I'm here with Namdi Obiizor. Now let's start with the obvious. You had an incredible play towards the end of the third quarter, if I believe that is correct. You stopped the Sharks from a third down drive for a touchdown with that crazy interception. Tell me what was going through your mind after that happened. Uh, you know, JJ made a play on the ball. The ball's in the air, and you know, it's kind of like slow motion. After that, just kind of got to make a play on it in the air. Yeah, let's try to reverse the field, get as much yards as I could, but check the ball. Yeah. So tell me, if one word to describe the feeling of when you catch that ball in your hands and you start to run. I'd say excitement. So overall, the team had, once again, another incredible week. You're 2-0. and oh, You're going into your first conference game next week. What's the energy like in the team room? Uh, I feel like we're feeling good, but um, I say like we, we aren't really accomplished in what we've done yet, so I feel like people are still hungry. Yeah, and I like that. What's the leadership look like on the other end? Uh, I feel like we have a lot of great player-led stuff, and I feel like that was different from last year as much as the coaches leading. So I feel like, you know, when you got the players doing it, it's real good. You guys have a community here that is so special. Not only the students and the fellow athletes in other departments, but also the community just that surrounds TCU. Is the energy and the environment just different when you walk into the Carter and you see all the purple and you see the young kids all the way up to the college students to the alumni here to support you guys? Yeah, I for sure feel a lot of the time playing the Carter. You know, TCU is really not that much of a big school when you think of other like power five schools, but you know, every time I play in here, it's packed out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Up next, we're going to talk to Richard Tony a little bit about the end of this game. And congratulations once again on the win. Thank you. We're lucky to have a collective that's as strong and as powerful as the Flying T Club. It's a big deal for us. It is a game changer. You know, I would just encourage any any fans out there to support it. Everyone asks me, what's the biggest priority? And I say, NIL is big. Please jump on board, show these student athletes how much they mean to you. The thing about NIL is I think there's a right and a wrong way to do it. And the Flying T Clubs do it the right way. Let's keep winning. Join the Flying T Club today. We are back yet again at the post game show for Frogs today. I'm here with Richard Tony. We were just talking about how our defense absolutely shut out our team once again this season. It is the first defensive shutout since 2017. You guys have a new defensive coordinator here with the Horned Frogs this season. How has it been working with the new coach? Uh, it's been really good. Um, he's a guy that comes in every day ready to work and he has a good scheme and things like that. So it's hard for a lot of offenses to do a lot of things to trick us up. Um, we just got to be in the right position to make our plays. And then, yeah. So how does it feel or how does the team react when you have these moments of conflict? How do they adjust into kind of getting under or getting ahead of it? Uh, yeah, so we uh, we uh, we prepare really hard during the week on a lot of these teams and stuff like that and just things that we might see, you know, a lot of teams, they might do a lot of movers or a lot of motion and stuff to trick us up. So really just uh, communication and getting lined up in the back end so that they can't do like no trick plays or no big explosive plays and we try to limit explosive plays. Yeah. Now, kind of a prerequisite, but leading into your first conference game of the season next week, how have you guys kind of been preparing yourselves up for that? Obviously, you're now 2-0 and for the season. Does that help you guys set you up going into this next game versus UCF next week? Uh, yeah, I feel like it do. It give us a lot of uh, momentum, momentum moving forward. And uh, same thing with we, this week uh, is, you know, we treat every opponent the same. Uh, you know, we got UCF coming in here, so. We're going to get on those dudes, uh, start preparing uh, after we watch this film and stuff like that, get everything corrected, and then, yeah, just be moving forward to the next week. How do you guys keep that energy level up, especially in a game like tonight where the final score ended up being 45-0, keeping just that just like momentum going, even though you are kind of really ahead of the game, but just trying to keep the guys positive and fighting just as hard as they did in the first quarter? Honestly, it's really just the brand of football that we play here and things like that. So it's toughness, physical, and then just being disciplined. 
And that's just the standard, you know, we don't never let up on any team and we're just always going to play our heart out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on the win. And we'll be right back after a few words with our sponsors. Thank you. Energy does everything for us. It's all encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters, our future. We don't just talk about what's needed. We focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. We are back again for the post-game show for Frogs today. I am joined by JoJo Earl, who had a crazy touchdown earlier this game. Congratulations, by the way. How was it when you all of a sudden you turned around and your teammate Savion Williams was throwing you the ball and not your OG quarterback, Josh Hoover? Uh, it was designed to come out that way, but I didn't think Savion was going to throw it. Because if I was covered, he was supposed to take off and run it, but he ended up throwing it anyways, and I came down with the kick, so that's how it all came out to me. How does it feel being back in the Carter after suffering some injury and having an away game last week? Now you're two and zero. Oh. What's like the atmosphere and the feeling like? It feels good. I ain't really played no football in so long. I miss spring, miss fall camp, so this is my first real go around. So it felt good to be back on the field, especially in the Carter being my first game and being two two and zero. Oh, what we didn't go two and zero oh last year, so that's an amazing feeling this year. We're getting ready for the next game. Yeah. Speaking of the next game, you have your first conference game next week versus UCF. How are you guys feeling going into that? What's kind of the behind the scenes, the preparation you guys have been talking about in the locker room? Well, we go game by game, so we haven't really talked about UCF until we start game planning for them. But we know that it's a big game and definitely a tough opponent that we face these past three games. So we just have to see when we start game planning. Yeah. So one last question for you. What are you happiest about coming out of this game? I just got some opportunities to play. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's a blessing. So that's all I got. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you, thank 2-0. You. Yeah. I'm really excited for you guys going into next week. Thank you. Welcome to the Squire Shop. We are locally owned and operated since 1994. We specialize in the finest men's clothing that the market has to offer at affordable prices with unbelievable service. We do uh, custom clothing all the way to more casual, Peter Millar, Johnny O, kind of everything. Well, my dad's the owner, so I've been around retail my whole life. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's the best boss I'll ever have. I know that. We love our TCU community. They have been so good to us. Come see us today. Go Frogs! Thank you guys for tuning into the post game show here at frogstoday.com. We'll be back next week at for a 5 o'clock show, 6.30 kickoff for our first conference game of the season versus UCF. The Frogs are now 2-0 after this crazy, incredible win versus LIU, shutting them out for the first time since 2017 with a final score of 45-0. But before all of this, we have some other incredible things going on this week, like our State of the Frogs show with head coach Sunny Dyke that airs every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And also our Frogs Today show, which covers all TCU athletics, airs every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you again to our sponsor, Richard Greenwater, for making this all happen. Once again, I'm your host, Jules Conti. We'll see you next week. Go Frogs.